Every film that's shown in the UK cinema has to be classified. The British Board of Film Classification and its examiners have to decide which certificate to award each film. In this programme, they explain how they take these difficult and sometimes controversial decisions. I like to think that actually we reflect what society's moral standards are rather than being the moral arbiters ourselves. Um, we, we have a set of guidelines that have been drawn up following consultation with over 11,000 people. Those people tell us what is acceptable, and we follow that. It, it's not the other way around. A lot of people think that we decide what is appropriate and tell the public that, that what they can watch. Actually, we reflect what the public tell us is acceptable. The board is based in Soho, in central London. Its 30 examiners come from all walks of life, but they have one thing in common. We're pretty much all film buffs. You have to have a pretty thorough grounding in film and definitely an interest in film in order to apply for this job. When we came for our interviews, the first interview is kind of a pub quiz, basically, on film and television, of course, because we do loads of DVDs and things. We watch films, we record issues in those films. We look for things like violence, sex, bad language, and using our set of guidelines, we judge what category a film or video work is most appropriately placed in. There are five main categories. Universal, suitable for all. Parental guidance, where some scenes may be unsuitable for young children. 12A, under 12s may watch these if accompanied by an adult. 15, suitable for 15 years and over. And 18, for adults only. Deciding whether a film should be a 12A or a 15 can be tricky. Under 15s are allowed to watch a 15 film at home. Many feel they should also be allowed to watch these in the cinema. 15 might be like a better film than a 12, and if you're 14, you don't really want to see like a 12 film because it might not be as good. Some things are really silly, like some games and stuff. It's just like, why is it a 15? There's nothing in it that's different to what I would have seen when I was 14. Yeah, I think very often they are wrongly classified because Sometimes you can get a uh, film which hasn't that got that much violence or that much wrong with it and it's classified more than a film which I personally would not like to watch. The board says it regularly consults the public. Films are classified according to four main issues. Sex and nudity, taste and decency, bad language and most importantly, violence. <laughs> What the, the general public in the UK tell us is that they are concerned about extreme images of violence being shown to children um, because of the potential for imitability, for the potential for psychological damage to children. The password, please. I've got a little itch. There should be no concentration on blood and injuries at 12, so the violence is more... Uh, um, impressionistic, should we say. Um, uh, so in Casino Royale, for instance, the, the, there, was some, there were some strong moments in Casino Royale. Uh, there was a, a famous torture scene where James Bond is being tortured. Um, you know what's going on, but you don't actually see any strong detail. Um, you don't see um, the blows landing on, on a particular part of his body that's being whipped with a rope. Um, you just know it's happening, it's kind of below screen. It's very unpleasant knowing what's happening, but you don't actually see it. Yeah! If you to see it, yeah! it would undoubtedly have pushed it up to at least 15. Yes! 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 <laughs> casino Royale, there is plenty of sort of let up from the violence. There are the scenes in the casinos, there's the love scenes, there's the bits where they're jumping around on cranes and not sort of particularly inflicting any violence. Whereas in Die Hard, it is very much going from one violent scene to the next violent scene. As fast as you can. Hey! Oh. Oh. Jesus! The scene where the Bruce Willis character fights against a female assassin. And it's quite a strong scene. It goes on for a long time. He throws her against bookcases. There's one point where he sort of grabs a handful of her hair. 
And there's a lot of really strong sound effects as she's sort of thrown against the walls and stuff like that. Okay, how much time do you need? Um, um, not much. <laughs> There's an awful lot of violence in it. Um, and despite the humour, we felt that there was just too much for it to be able to be accommodated at 12A. In my village, when you steal the wife of a dead man, they take you to a tree and they hang you by your skin. The Last King of Scotland is different in that it, it purports to depict real events. Uh, certainly, um, uh, uh, Idi Amin was a real person. He, he was known to have murdered many, many thousands, or possibly more, of, of his own countrymen. <laughs> the rather grotesque scene where a young uh, guy played by James McAvoy has hooks inserted into his chest. Very strong scene. Uh, the exact moment of piercing the flesh is not shown. You think it is, but it is not actually shown. It is a very vicious torture scene. It goes on for a long time. He's clearly in a huge amount of pain. There's none of the, in Casino Royale, Bond is sort of responding flippantly to his torturer, um, you know, almost encouraging him to carry on and torture him. There is none of that in Last King of Scotland. It's very realistic. You see bloody detail. You see him being hoisted up. It's very sort of protracted and callous. And I mean, that's one of the things that sort of pushes that film towards the higher end of the 15 category. It's very difficult to speculate on how far they'd have had to have gone to have made it an 18. Um, uh, it, the context there is very different to the kind of torture that one sees, for instance, in such films as Hostel and Saw, where uh, the, 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 where the rather um, uh, grotesque injuries inflicted upon the characters are done purely for, for the sake of sadism. You could have a completely naked person just walking around at you and PG, but as soon as any sexual elements become involved, then you're talking about higher categories. And I'd say at 12, you could probably see maybe a bit of boob a bit of bum in a sex scene, um, you're more likely just to see head and shoulders of people under the blankets, a sort of a very brief establishing shot that there is sexual activity going on without any actual sexual activity. At 15, it gets stronger. Um, you could see sort of full body nudity at 15. Um, and then if there's full body nudity and some sort of writhing around and things, then it's more likely to get to 18. The last thing I need is another picture of me looking like a porcelain doll. As a paying customer. There is no sex in Titanic. However, there is one scene of nudity when Kate Winslet's character goes into the room occupied by uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's character and uh, undresses and asks him to draw her portrait. If you strip away every other issue in Titanic which contributed to the, to the classification, that scene on its own would have been enough to make it a 12A because of the sexualization of the nudity. A lot of people who, who saw the film and complained about that scene um, felt that it was gratuitous, that it didn't need to be there in the film. Um, we felt that it was, it was quite a good scene in sort of establishing the relationship between the two, that there was something deeper than just this sort of um, a vague flirtation on board a ship. Robbie. Cecilia. I love you. Atonement uh, is, is a very good uh, uh, example to, to, to use to c contrast with what we've just spoken about in relation to Titanic, in that um, we do see some fairly graphic sex going on, although there's no nudity in the scene. Twelve AR guidelines say sexual activity may be implied. Clearly, this was more than implied, it was depicted, and that's the key, the key difference here. Someone's coming. And that's what made that scene on its own a 15 marker for the film as a whole. Lisa, you're the most amazing person I've ever met. It's only been a short time, but I think that I'm completely Shh. in love. Team America was a really interesting one because um, 
Our guidelines at 15 in terms of sex say sexual activity may be portrayed but without strong detail. And when you look at that scene, uh, there's quite a lot of detail. There's an emptiness I need to feel And only one emptiness will do only woman... They don't have any genitals, they're just puppets, and so how is it possible for there to be any detail? So that was why we pumped for the 15 for that. We felt it sat fine at 15 that we would have looked a little censorious had we, had we pushed that up to 18. My profession, work as a television reporter for Kazakhstan. Please, you see. Oh, when it came to Borat, um, we were very much aware that it was coming from a very sort of ironic point of view, um, that um, the maker of the film, Sasha Baron Cohen, is a very well-known figure, and he's a very well-known Jewish figure, and the fact that a lot of the, the humour in there could have been taken as anti-Semitic, the fact that it was made by a Jewish filmmaker almost mitigated that fact, and we felt that at 15, um, the audience was aware that the context was... At, at 15, the audience would, would be aware of the concept of irony and would be aware that actually these things were not meant to be taken seriously. The main issue that we had to think about, though, was the, the, the scene uh, near the beginning of the film, the, the so-called running of the Jew, um, where you see these grotesque caricatures of, of, uh, of Jewish people, you know, almost sort of harking back to the kind of images um, that one used to see in, in Nazi Germany, being chased through the streets of, of, of Kazakhstan. This was clearly not intended to be uh, um, uh, a stereotypical image of, of Jewish people or to be offensive to Jews. Rather, it was uh, uh, sending up uh, the bigotry of many of these East European countries where anti-Semitism is still absolutely rife. The British public um, find um, uh, strong language, the F word and the C word, in particular, to be very, very offensive, and they tell us that they don't want uh, young children hearing this this language. For weddings and funerals, it's a sort of classic example of something jumping straight into a category within the opening minutes. Right. Hugh Grant and Charlotte Coleman say numerous uses of the F word. It was one of those films where you're sort of sat in the examining room laughing about it because it immediately becomes a 15 because there's so many uses in the opening scene. It used to be the case that more than one use of the F word would take a film out of 12A. Um, that isn't the case anymore. Um, Although we do record the numbers and frequency of, of swearing in a film, it's no longer the paramount uh, reason behind the decision. Context is everything. For the British Board of Film Classification, the key is public opinion. Bad language in films has become more acceptable. And the board has changed its guidelines to take this into account. If attitudes to violence or sex and nudity change, those guidelines will be altered as well.